Good evening, and welcome to Thinking Re-Envisioned with the incomparable Henry G. Noel, or as I like to call it, paving the way to your peace of mind. Here's Henry. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Transitional Radio where you can mortal up with Brian Brody on All Natural Being Sunday through Thursday from 8 to 8.30. And IPM Nation Sneak Speaks Sundays from 7 to 7.30 in the evening. And this, our 21st episode of Think and re -Envision. My name is Henry Noel, and I am your host for Thinking re -Envision. We are here to make you think. We are here to make you question. Question everything. Now, I wish to thank you for joining me this Monday evening for, well, thinking re envisioned. And what we're going to be doing this evening and talking about is just, you know, what, 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 what's going on with, with everything that's happening uh, in the U.S. With, with the elections that happened and, and go through this, you know, go through the, what, exactly who's contributed and what's going on. If we really feel like we uh, are getting represented, you know what I mean? So, you know, let's see what's what's going to happen, and we'll find out what's going on with the average person, and and see what you all think. So, from here, we are going to be broadcasting. We are broadcasting live from two degrees south of the equator, from our actual transitional radio uplink studios here in beautiful Cuenca. And um, I want to say thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it. And we are going to be broadcasting live on IP. PM Nation on Thinking Re Envision's uh, Facebook and YouTube pages. And I want to thank you from the our listeners from all over the globe. I want to thank the ones that are listening on live radio right now, the ones that listen to our rebroadcasts, and of course, y'all, the ones sitting, the fly on the wall video listeners. I really appreciate that you're here. And thank you so much for listening in. I also want to thank our good friends at Wirecast for making it possible for us to be broadcasting live and globally. And my thanks to my brother Wayne for getting it actually all connected and working. So I want to thank everybody and anybody who is interested in participating in show in this show. Email me at Henry at Henry G. Noel, and I will bring it up on the show. It's my my wish to make sure that this show is 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 there for everybody. That if you want to be active, you can. If you don't, you don't have to be. But if you want to, you certainly can do that. Uh, we trust that you've had an enjoyable Monday thus far, and I hope that this continues. So let's get into the thread. Let's say hi to everybody. See what everybody thinks about tonight's topic, uh, just for grins, okay? So anyway, I want to say hi to everybody, and we'll scroll it back up to the top. Of course, my brother's here because I wouldn't be if he isn't. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much. I'm great, glad to see that you're on. Maria, thank you so much for being here too. Joseph, always wonderful to have you along here. Uh, let's see. We've got Marcia. Thank you so much, Marcia, for being here. Appreciate it. Hi, Jamie. How are you? And thank you. <laughs> And hey, y'all, right back, Marie. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, let's see. Marcia says, hi, Mr. Henry. Hi, everybody. And Hyru and me ready for the show. Thank you so much, you two. I really appreciate it. Love you guys. Uh, Joseph Haggerty's in the U.S. How can 35, 350 million be represented by 325, 535 representatives? You know, I've been asking my question. I think I've asked that several times, Joseph, and we've brought it up and talked about this. It's really kind of amazing, isn't it, when you really do the math? But <laughs> um, it just makes you kind of wonder just exactly who is representing who here. You know, when we, I was doing some reading on it to see just, I wanted to see, now that the elections are over, I like to go back and just see what the recaps were. And, and I, and I kind of get that way. Yeah, I, you know, I can't help it. I, I just kind of like, like to know how the, what the statistics are and what really went on. So I started to go through to look at the contributors. Um, that contribute to the elections and to see exactly what their what their interests are and how much they contribute to see whether or not we even have a chance at being represented. So I started looking through and um, I, I picked up an article and at the top of the list, of course, is is Michael Bloomberg, um, you know, donated sixty one million dollars. Um, it doesn't matter which party, but he, so he donated $61 million. And of course, Michael Bloomberg is uh, Bloomberg, the head of Bloomberg. And they are, you know, they own NBC. They own, or, you know, they just own a ton of stuff, communications and everything like that. And then right behind him was Sheldon 
Edelson, the owner of the Sands Casinos. <clears throat> and I thought that was rather interesting. And then right along with him is his wife, Miriam, who is the president of Adelson, the um, um, the clinics, the uh, the drug abuse clinics out of Las Vegas. Together, one hundred and twelve million dollars donated to campaigns. I guess that goes along with my fifty bucks. I guess um, Tom Steiner, uh, a Steyer, Steyer, uh, he is the uh, hedge fund founder. Fifty million, fifty one million dollars. Founder of Wisconsin Shipping and Packaging Materials, um, uh, Richard, uh, and I can't even pronounce his last name, it's U-I-H-L-E-N, $34 million. Uh, David S. Sussman, $19.5 million. Marilyn and James Simon, $16 million. George Soros, $13 million. He's, a, he's one of the paupers in this one. George Soros, can you imagine that? Only $13 million. Oh, my God. So, I mean, just that, that, that's just a top five. <laughs> That's just the top five. So when you really look at what all, how much money is going into campaigns, uh, you're right. You know that that whole that Joseph is absolutely right. You know how can 350 million people, I don't know, be controlled by 300 and 535 representatives? You know and. That's really what it is. Uh, Janet, welcome, welcome, welcome. Janet, it's always great to see you show up. Thank you so much. Jamie, let me <laughs> yeah, let me pop a Xanax. You know, Xanax, you know, we have to. That's that's it's unbelievable. Sarah, great. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you so much for being there. Hopefully your internet hangs loose and good tonight. Uh Candace joins us. Thank you so much, Candace. I appreciate it. Soros. Yeah, Soros. George Soros. I, I guess I guess you know he's actually a US citizen, so I guess he has every right to do that. But um, but yes, yeah, that's he's a pauper in this whole thing of sixteen million dollars. Uh, it kind of floors me. Uh, Joseph says if you have a uh, if you have a rule book, a constitution, you have to stand by it or change it. Our representatives are bought by favors, money, power. We the serfs are limited by the number of choices. You know, yes, we are. I mean, and it goes right down the line. Uh, that's absolutely true. Kenneth, welcome so much. This is it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it, Kenneth. And thank you so much for everything that's going on with, you know, between you and Brian. I think that's terrific. Great product, by the way. I really, I wish we had them down here. That would be fabulous. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're sort of a little bit of ways. Uh, you know, it's really hard to to keep keep it all in perspective when when you realize the amount of money that is spent to influence campaigns and influence politicians and um and since our existence as a surf is is relying on these people to make decisions for us um <laughs> represent the people one quarter of the top one percent of the population donated two-thirds of the amount of the money can in that that in, that's for the entire election two thirds of the two billion dollars at least that that was pumped in there was produced by the top one quarter of one percent people um that has to tell you who's getting represented it, 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 it's not us you know i and and i'm sorry george carlin is not around because he'd have a heyday with all of this stuff uh jamie says um if you get a chance, watch Russell Brand. Yes, Russell is fabulous. I love Russell Brand. He's absolutely good. The emperor has no clothes. A brilliant, yeah. See, you know, and that's I, you're right. And that is a really good one. We I really should we should do that. That would be fun to bring that up. Um, you know, it's it's amazing how we really don't understand our role in any of this. And and I don't know if, if we have a role actually. You know, Ken says, thank you. Uh, thank you. You're welcome, sir. I really do. Uh, yeah, I would love to. Thank you. It would be great. Man, I tell you, it could sure be used down here. We don't have shootings, which is a nice thing. We don't really have a whole lot of shootings down here. The guns are really hard to get here. Uh, you have to go through an awful lot to get them, and they're very expensive, and people can't afford them. So we don't have really an issue with guns. Uh, which is kind of nice, um, a major issue with guns. We do have the issues sometimes, and, and usually it's out in the rural areas, but we don't have the issues with schools getting shot up and stuff. For some reason, people have a little bit more respect for family, and they have a little bit more respect for 
the safety of their people rather than what's going on in the states. It's it's almost ludicrous. And I and thank goodness there's people like you, Kenneth, out there do, trying to do things to make make kids safe. Thank you. That is fabulous. Um, yeah. So here we are. Uh, the majority, you know, 300, we represent 350 million people here and, and we have 535 representatives in Congress. I, I guess you got to throw in the president and the vice president. I guess that might not be a bad idea. So there's a couple more, um, don't really do a whole lot for us, but this is really what's, what's happening. And, and I don't, we don't, we just accept it. I, I guess maybe we just don't have a choice and, and I'm not bright enough to realize that yet. Um, but I just don't want to roll over and play dead because I think it's just wrong. And, but it's all going to come from us if we stand up and we make it known that this is not what we want to do, that this is not how we want to be represented. I mean, I remember, I don't remember the days. I mean, I remember reading about the days in history, you know, where, where, you know, people were, were elected, you know, it might've been a shop owner or, or, or the, the, the delivery person that uh, had the most, you know, prestige in within a community in some small town, and that person was elected to represent their their constituents in Washington. And so, for two weeks or three weeks out of the year, they would travel all the way to Washington and do the federal business, and you know, dealing with treaties and and all of that. And they come back and they'd run their store. What happened? Not only is it become a full time job where the representative is away from their constituents for pretty much the entire year. They're certainly not in office or in, in, in doing work all that time because they're off traveling around the world and, and putting their smiley faces out there so that the, that Germany and Switzerland and Norway and Belgium, they can all see them um, at our expense, of course, it's all charged to us. When did that become a full-time job? So it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, Kenneth says, yeah, puppets on a string of, of strings of dollars. You're at, that's absolutely true, Kenneth. And that is what's so frustrating. Joseph says politics have come, um, have become a career choice, not only a career choice, but they get lifetime health care. That is far better than what the people get. They get lifetime salary. I, I'm sorry. Why? And they get to give themselves raises. I, I, I want any one of you company owner or work. In fact, Kenneth, you're superintendent of school. Can you give yourself a raise? I mean, I just think that that's ludicrous. Uh, <laughs> Joseph, can you just walk in and say, I, I want to raise? I mean, I don't, I have business owners that, that can't even afford to really get a paycheck because they're paying employees, they're paying the debts, everything comes out of their pocket that, you know, they don't get, half of them don't even get paid. So, you know, this is, it's crazy. And here we have politicians that, that represent a tiny number of people, and uh, and that's who gets their vote. It's really frustrating. Um, you know, we when we elect people to office, and you go in, and you know what the salary is. You know, let let you know, just let's say that's you know two hundred thousand dollars, and that's what a congressman gets paid. So you do the math, and they're in office for four years, and so that's two hundred thousand times four. So you got eight hundred thousand dollars. And they come out with 20 million. That's a bit hard to digest. I mean, I don't get that kind of interest rate in a bank. <laughs> I sure don't. Unless they got great investors, perhaps. So it's hard to just understand what's happening. Um, yeah, it's a hard no. I got you. <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> it goes back to having no morals or values. Joseph, absolutely right. You know, none, you know, we are picked on to, we're told, you know, we have to do our, you know, our national duty, our, our civic duty, and we have to vote. You know, if they gave us people to, to vote for it, I think that would make a nice thing rather than choosing. Uh, you can't just say it's a full-time job, Henry. Look at the mess our president has. I say it, I say it, uh, I say it, you, you know me. Yes, I know, I know, I, I get you. But it's really, it's only, but the messes that they make, are their messes. Uh, it, think of what the bills that they're passing and the pork that's all in these bills that's buried. If you've ever gone through, it's a great exercise if everybody got, gets a free, free moment to do it, a free moment, take a free hour and a half to do it. 
pull up the latest bill that was passed by Congress and read it. And you will be shocked what's in it. I mean, it is amazing, all of the stuff that goes into it. I had the very, I took the, the uh, great pleasure in going through the uh, defense budget, uh, the, the bill, uh, when it came out, all whatever thousands of pages it was, and, and went through just to read, just to go through and start looking at it to see if I could understand it. Wow, I was shocked. And that kind of intrigued me to go back and start reading the Patriot Act, which, you know, you're, if you remember the Patriot Act, uh, when it was up before Congress and, and, and we had the Congress people. In fact, I think um, um, our Speaker of the House at the time was Nancy Pelosi. And she came out with the comment, well, we have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. I, I mean, I'll never forget that. So I sat down to go and read it. And um, oh my gosh, uh, it is, it's hard to believe exactly the power that's there under certain circumstances and wow it will it will it'll blow you away when you really go through and read it and i you know so i do and i and rita poor rita i know she puts up with with a lot with me you know she'll tell me hey somebody posted this and i'll say yeah well did you check it out uh well no i didn't so go check it out and then let's see what happens and 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 she goes and checks it and man oh man she'll come back and she's steaming well, how could they be so wrong how could they lie <laughs> we check things out it's really very interesting uh, let's see, catch up with some of the things. Wayne says that it's the only full-time job in America where you don't have to accomplish anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess you can, and you get pay raises for the, the, for less that you do. The, the least you do, the, the more you get paid. Uh, Rita says, wasn't that the health care bill? There's another one. There's another good bill. Um, or am I confused? No, it's, there was, yep, there you go. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, nothing matters if we don't have uh, affordable health care. Well, you know, it's if, you know, there were so many things in health care and not just a health care bill. I, you know, to me, it, like anything else in a capitalist system, companies are created and provide insurance for people. The government stepped in and put restrictions on what states each of these companies could be in. So you might be a New York company but you can't sell your insurance in New Jersey. Or you might be a California company and you can't sell your, your insurance in Texas. So here companies in, cap, in a capitalist system are under competition, then you simply just, you sell your product wherever it is. And if the people want it, they buy it and therefore you have your rates. And if somebody wants it, sells it cheaper, there's the competition and you can go ahead and get it. Well, when the government puts restrictions on where they can sell, literally monopolizing them, so you end up with Blue Cross of California and you have a, a Blue Cross of Texas, and a, a, which is a totally different insurance policies that you get. And so the government assisted the insurance companies in developing almost monopolies within the states that they were in. So how can people afford it? I mean, there's no reason, there's no competition to control the prices. So, you know, in a way, the insurance companies were they had a free reign based thanks to the government. I'm sure that must have gone into somebody's campaign funds too, but it's really hard. Um, let's see. Um, Wayne says, uh, nothing. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, Jamie says that nothing matters if we don't have affordable health care. And Wayne says, I want, I want that job not exactly. But Shane wants to <laughs> go up there with the boys. Yeah, poor Shane. We've been picking on him forever. 2020, Shane in 2020. And uh, my daughter is just not going to clean the White House. Uh, in another, another office though. Let's see, uh, Candace says, uh, um, uh, POS is, uh, is trying to change that. Yeah, okay, well, good, That's, that, that would help. Um, J uh, Joseph says, we started our own healthcare plan, team up with a couple of, uh, of, in, of independent-minded folks, because we don't need government to solve problems, but we don't, and that's it. POTUS is trying to change that, I meant, yeah, I, I understand. Um, you know, Every time the government steps in, you know, everybody thinks the government is the answer to the answer to everything. And let me tell you, the government is not the answer to everything. The government does nothing but get in the way. I mean, they can't. The government businesses are in the in the market to make money. Let's face it. That's what that's what people invest in companies for. They want to make a profit. They want to make money off of, on them on their investment. Governments spend money. That's all they do. They don't make it. 
They print it. This one happens to print it until somebody changes the world currency, but they simply print money. They don't make money. They spend it. That's all the job is. Government's job is spend money. That's all it is. And when you have a government that spends money, remember, it's your money they're spending. It's your tax dollars they spend. So when they put something together to take over General Motors or they they fund um, you know, a, um, a, a, a Wall Street uh, financier, this is your money going to bail out companies. The government can't make money. They don't know how to make money. They only know how to spend it. And even with a multimillionaire, a billionaire like, like, like Donald Trump, who's made money and made money and made money. And I remember every time he filed bankruptcy, I remember every time he's done it, he's lost a lot of money. So governments don't make money. That's simply not what it does. And, and we have to start to understand we are responsible for ourselves. We are totally responsible. The government is not going to bail us out. The government is not there to help us financially. They're there to spend our money. And the reason people contribute to, to campaigns is so that they spend it with them, so that there's benefits to them, that poor policies get, get uh, enacted that benefit them. And, and that's all the thing. I mean, remember the pipeline issue. You know, we, we had four years of trying to keep the pipeline from going. And, and right away it gets passed and that, now the company's made fortune. This is what it's all about. We are, we, are, we are responsible for us. And if we are supposed to be the stewards watching what they're spending our money on, and we don't do it. So they have free reign and we have nobody else to blame but us. Um, uh, Joseph says, a smaller is better. Who wants your troubles better than, you said, absolutely right. You know. Um, Jamie says, Let, uh, just like Goodwill is a profit hungry uh, machine, not Goodwill, that, you know, and there it is, um, you know, nonprofit companies that that the CEOs are paid a fortune. No, they're not. They're, for, they're there to make money. Uh, Candace says, we are so divided and such horrible stuff going on. I wouldn't want President Trump. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want his job either. He uh, he donates every check. Yeah, he, he obviously doesn't need the money. I mean, he's very wealthy, which is great. But the problem is, is it's going to the military, you know, industrial complex. A lot of it is going there. Um, Joseph says, example, U.S. Is a, is, a, is a union of 50 states. Thus, we have 50 chances to fix the problem. You know, and, and, and it, we can. You know, if we start becoming more proactive in what goes on, read the bills that are coming through. They're, they're out there. And that's what gets me. Is they're out there. They're on the... The, the Congress site, they're on the Senate site, they're posted on the White House site. Every executive order is posted on there. All you got to do is read them. Just read them, and you'll be surprised what's going on. Um, and they're up there as they are presented. When they get presented for to be voted on, they're up there for you to read. And that is the one place you can go to find out exactly what your government is spending their money on or what they're planning on spending the money. And then you can go through and see what goes on. Now, once it gets close to being passed, there's a lot of other little things that get shoved in the back pages of it. And that's where these roads and bridges to nowhere end up getting funded because some congressman or senator needed to get that pork in there. And but we can monitor that. We can control that. We can let people know we're just, we just we don't we don't we don't favor that decision. We don't favor it. Again, you know, until we try it, it's it, we we can't complain because we don't really check things out. Uh, Joseph says people cave to nationalism, the fear of losing some some money. You know, it, 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 yeah, it's it's amazing how much is spent. Well, you know, I mean, the budget now, and I can't, I don't remember it now because I've been away from it so for so long. The last I knew, it was like close to twenty million, if not or twenty trillion. If it wasn't already 20 trillion, that is just for the present debt. There's another 200 trillion that's promised in retirements and long-term payments. You have any idea how much money that is? That is unbelievable. And then you have an organization like the Pentagon that lost, I think it was $2 trillion, lost it, just simply can't account for it. Um, Fiduciary responsibility, stewards of our tax dollars. Yeah, right. Sorry. 
but we don't understand it. We don't realize what's going on. But this every dollar that is spent for a politician to fly to Greece to spend their vacation with their family and of course their entourage of security and and all of their family members we pay that that's us every golf outing is paid for by us every trip that goes out of washington is paid for by us when a representative comes home to his when they do come home to their consider it's paid for by every if they sneeze it's paid for by us Four minutes already. Wow. Thank you, bro. Whew. Uh, Candace, I'll never agree to full term abortions, ex babies, uh, destruction of heritage, and on and on. I support our military and keep it strong. Uh, and Joseph says states can push back, exa example, the, the passage of state marijuana usage. You know, and it's really very interesting. Thank you for bringing that up, too, Joseph. I really do appreciate that because it was very interesting when I mentioned that the, the top donor, uh, uh, Marion and Sheldon, uh, Adelson, uh, that they have a, she's the president of a drug abuse clinic, a, a drug abuse clinic. So what they do is they, they, they help drug addicts get off of drugs and they are fighting tooth and nail to not legalize marijuana. Just so you know, um, they are spending a fortune trying to keep it illegal. So there you go. Um, this is, <laughs> this is what's going on guys. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. This is what's happening. And um, and we're oblivious to it. We simply don't. We don't. We, there's so much going on. I don't think we can keep up. That's one thing. No one person can keep up with all this stuff. But to realize that it's out there, to realize that that's what's going on. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. The war on drugs. You, that is probably the best oxymoron I've ever seen. Joseph, the war on drugs has brought more drugs into the United States than I think anything else, it's just amazing. And then, you know, and, and that's always the war on illegal drugs, the ones that they won't make legal. You know, what about all the opioids and the problems we have with the opioids that have just come up? Um, and uh, those are legal drugs. And it's just, it's, it's gotten so horrible. It really has just gotten horrible. That's probably a topic all in itself is the opioids and the family the family itself that actually owns the company that not only produces the largest amount of opioids, they also manufacture the generic brand of the same opioids. <laughs> and they also fund clinics that are helping people to get off of the drugs. So, oh, we've got three minutes. Okay. Oh, 30 seconds. All right. <laughs> I got you. Thank you. All right. So we got about a minute left to go. Listen, everybody. Thank you. I really want to appreciate you, your 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 response and all of this. Thank you. I'll I'll you know send me some ideas if you know of things you want to talk about. I will pop it up here and, and see what we can do. Otherwise, I'll have to dig up another topic for tomorrow. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about stuff. Bring it up. I love it. This is what I want to do, and I it, it's just I think it just helps me learn a lot more. It lets me understand where you guys are coming from. Thank you so much for it. I will talk at you tomorrow, and uh, I look forward to having you back. Well, you're welcome to come back tomorrow. Thank you. Have a great evening. Hasta luego. Hasta mañana. Thank you, guys.